The robot we fought tonight was a custom job created by the weapon masters of Tekadon, and they won't stop until you're destroyed. After the last two entries, this episode is pretty refreshing by feeling like a solid episode of Ben 10. It's a great example of a fun and exciting episode that still doesn't need to play into the story arc, and a reminder that filler doesn't always mean bad. Volcanus pays the weapon masters of Tekadon for a machine that continuously produces warriors to fight Ben, with each learning and getting stronger than the last. It's nice to continue to use Volcanus' wealth as a focus for his character, usually stuff like this would be forgotten by the next episode, but the results of Kevin's big score still affects them dozens of episodes later. The beginning brainstorm sequence was excellent and one of his most memorable uses of the form. It was very smart for Ben to try to defeat the Tekadon using Goop, which is how he once defeated him before. Also neat for Gwen to work with Arjit to deduce Volcanus' involvement. There's actually a lot that happens in this episode, but it's well paced and not rushed, resulting in it feeling much longer than 22 minutes, but in a good way. The comedy in this episode is just as great as the action. This episode showcases that Ultimate Alien can still have amusing, almost omniverse-style plot lines, despite UA's more generally serious tone. Cause the bigger they are, the harder they are. Doesn't remember how the rest of that goes. And while the solution to their problem may be a bit of a stretch, it was still pretty clever and also makes for a comedic but satisfying ending. I also like the small notes of Gwen wishing she had a car. Since Ultimate Ben unlocked all of Ben Prime's aliens, it would have been neat if Ben used Upgrade in this episode, especially after his reintroduction in Heroes United. I liked seeing Julie's competitive side, even if it brings out a bit of brashness in her, but it's nice to see any side of her personality outside of her relationship to Ben. Although I'm surprised Gwen let Ben get away with using Brainstorm for his game. But even so, the characters are all within their personalities without feeling antiquated. Why do you say safely dispose when we all know you've already lined up a buyer? Because it makes me sound less greedy. The heart-to-heart -heart between the Tennysons was a good way to maintain their bond and show they're willing to openly talk and care for each other outside of high-stakes scenarios. Volcanus was a great addition to this episode as well. Weak sauce, Tennyson! Weak sauce! The visuals notably look much better than recent episodes as of late, and with a story having Having this much action, I'm glad it got the right treatment. Everything from the backgrounds to the animation is very well done. Hell, even the golf course flags are animated, and there's actual bystanders in the road too. It's amusing to see Volcanus drink from a swirly straw, I just had to mention that. It's been a while since I've complimented the show's choreography, which is fantastic in this story, but even the smaller, subtle moments look great too. It's also cool to note that Ultimate Echo Echo's sonic discs can still exist and operate independently even after Ben transforms back to human. While this episode is mutual as not important as some of the other fillers, it's a breath of fresh air being one of the good ones, and worth watching to help give more casual episodes of UA some limelight. It also establishes a bit more of the Tekadon lore, and also sets up a future episode to come. With as much praise as I'm giving this episode, it's no surprise that it's very entertaining. I wouldn't mind more filler episodes if they were made as well as this one. This episode is very rooted in the world of Ben 10, which is one of its greatest strengths, and you can tell the characters are very well seasoned with how they're written, and I'm happy that we can still have stories like this one. Tell us, son, I wish I could hate you to death.